This is John Paul Rai coming to you from Tokyo, Japan. Some people call me. Quick shout out to Pop Culture Minefield. Thank you for the support. Cool channel. Check them out. And I just remembered something. If you want to know if a movie is woke or if you probably don't like things with social agendas and stuff like that, what you do is you check a feminist website and you see if they liked the movie. So I found a website called Pussy Pop Culture. Yep, that's right, Pussy Pop Culture, and they loved Dark Fate. Let's take a little look at what they said. So here it is, right here, Pussy Pop Culture, excuse me ladies, that is the name of it, and I can't change that, it's not my website. All right, let's see what we got here. Spoiler alert, feminism, immigration, and nostalgia in Dark Fate. Looks like that's what Liz wants to see. As a massive Terminator fan, I was ecstatic when I found out the franchise would be back with another installation. However, I was worried the new film would follow in the footsteps of T3, Salvation, and Genesis, which were disappointing to say the least. And I thought Salvation was decent, and I thought T3 was decent. Genesis, not so much. Luckily, they quickly revealed that the film would pick up right where T2 left off, on with the promise of being reunited with my favorite female fictional character, Sarah Connor, I took myself to the movies and prepared for Tim Miller's Dark Fate. Forget about Tim Miller saying things about how Grace is going to piss off trolls and nostalgic fans and things like that. You know, he's cool. Let's see it. All right. I don't like Tim Miller so much, but all right. Assuming you do like him, let's see what happens. I was not disappointed. In fact, it was much better than I thought it would be. Not only was Sarah Connor back and looking fine as hell, she was joined by two badass female characters, Grace and Danny. I guess Danny's a badass. Danny is essentially the Sarah Connor of the future that the Prevention of Judgment Day created. I thought she was essentially the John Connor of the future. And apparently Liz here has no problem as a big Terminator fan of long time what happened to John. Just, she doesn't even mention John, by the way. Just, you know, okay, whatever, John's gone, let's move on. Alright, so here she goes on to describe Grace being cybernetic, things like that. We don't care about her details about her describing Grace. And here is where her true colors come out, although her true colors already came out because this is called Pussy Pop Culture. She says, in rather feminist twist, it is not Danny's future son that is meant to lead the resistance, it is Danny herself. She embodies and harbors the importance of both Sarah and John Connor. Well, she mentions John, but not her opinion on how good or bad the storyline is concerning John getting thrown under the bus. I think it's horrible. Of course, Liz just thinks nothing of it. Danny finds and saves Grace as a child and raises her to be a badass soldier assassin. In fact, it's Danny who sends Grace back to save her. That, that sounds familiar. I'm not 100% sure about plot points in T1 and T2, but I think John was doing something like that. Danny is a great character she says, but Danny's one of the characters that got like the lowest ratings and least likability. But I'm personally obsessed with Grace, and I think Grace is, is fine. I mean, you know, I think she's a fine character. Nothing wrong with her, nothing wrong with Sarah, nothing wrong with Arnold, just basically Danny. She goes on to say what other roles that Mackenzie played, not very interested in that. She says here, not only is she in incredible shape, but they make her look enormous. She towers over everyone and skillfully takes on the Rev-9. Sorry, Ruby Rose, you've been replaced. Don't worry, Ruby Rose replaced herself. Or should I say, Batwoman got replaced, because it looks like that show is really going down. So, not much competition there, although it's pretty tough. Dark Fate vs. Batwoman, one of the biggest bombs in movie history, vs. one of the biggest bombs in TV history. <laughs> I don't know, close call. She goes on to compliment Arnold being in the movie. Okay, no problem with that. Obviously, he's a classic character and, you know, it is what it is. She also goes on to say here how it kind of has the same vibe as T2. I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. And, um, okay, I guess so. I hope it does. But it didn't seem to matter much because the thing is an incredible historical bomb and the third biggest historical bomb in history of the box office. So I guess it didn't matter. And then, down here, she says, I was impressed with the extent to which the filmmakers decided to include Mexico in the issue of immigration. We were introduced to Danny in Mexico City, where she lives with her brother Diego. And, you know, the thing is this. 
a lot of people didn't like that political end of it with the Mexican border. So I gotta be honest, if it's taking place in America in 2020, that would be a thing. But do they have to include it in the movie? I just, I'm kind of, you know, it doesn't like totally bother me, but I don't like it. I'd rather have that out of the movie. But of course Liz likes it. So she likes feminist stuff. She likes political stuff. I couldn't be more different. She shows a picture of the T-1000 versus the Rev-9, and I actually think this cop here, the T-1000, does look more intimidating. Um, the Rev-9 looks okay. He makes like an okay villain, but nothing special. This guy, for some reason, maybe it's my nostalgia, maybe my childhood, but he kind of stands out to me. There's something about his kind of creepy, evil, determined look. Diego's just kind of like, what's up? What are you guys up to? I'm um, Diego. Or Rev-9. I don't know. Yeah, it's not bad, but it ain't great either. Kind of cool how his border control, I, I guess. You know, an authority figure. Yeah, right. And then we have that creepy, creepy picture. And I'm thinking back to about a year ago when I saw this, and I'm thinking, damn, this movie is going to be weird. And it turns out it was a bomb. It was weird. It was bad. It was all that. And she says here, whether or not there is intended social commentary in Dark Fate, you can decide for yourself. Ultimately, I don't think it really matters, because regardless of what your opinion is in the film's take on immigration and the issue of immigration itself, the film's ties and allusions to T2, as well as the badass female takeover by Danny Grace and Sarah, make it truly enjoyable. Wait a minute. Doesn't it, like, destroy T1 and T2? Because John gets told totally thrown under the bus and you know that stuff doesn't matter anymore that didn't happen I, I mean I guess she's saying because it ripped off T2 it was good couldn't disagree more with this article I'm gonna link it down below because I didn't read the whole thing and this is a uh, pussy pop culture for you guys anyway I'm doing shout outs special thanks things like that you guys let me know down below what you think and I will see you next time <laughs>